My name's Joey Yates. I'm the uh, church hall director at KMAC, and I've been there for about you know 11 years. And KMAC's history has a lot to do with craft uh, and the legacy of craft and materials. And a lot of the contemporary art that we show is usually led by artists frequently um, who are using materials in sort of interesting, non-traditional ways inspired by craft or folk artists. And uh, also, one of the things I like about your work is that as a musician, uh, interested in improvisation and chance, there are lots of things I started to see like we could have really cool conversations. So, uh, I really like the sort of life of the material, that it sort of has its own um, way of living and changing. And I think a lot of my work is about change. And it's also a lot about um, not having control completely over it and then coming back and working with that. And you also uh, get two sides to this, whereas a yeah. canvas, you probably wouldn't get this much yeah. of a lead or this much of an image on the other side of it. So mm -hmm. you're interested in kind of three-dimensional mm -hmm. turning paper into yeah. a sculpture. Yeah. We usually think about paper as a substrate for drawing or something else, or st studies or sketches. But it really does become like the focus of the work in a way, and how it kind of reveals lots of things, and we can hang it, and fold it, and bend it. You do that with canvas. Yeah, but, I mean, but this it, does have a Sam Gilliam quality. It does have right? definitely Sam Gilliam quality. Yeah. Uh, but again, he's you know he he's uh, he's breaking down some other language of painting that I think you're, while you start off as a painter, I think you left even the language of expanded painting. Yeah, really I, I, early on it was I couldn't stay flat. And so, you know, paper and, and just whatever forms, it's just, it's, it's I like all of it. I, I do not want to be limited to say that, you know, I'm just doing that one thing. And then I realized there was something like opening up, whether it's a plant or something, it's opening and it's opening out to the space so that you would get able to walk around it and it would shift. And don't forget to ask us questions. It'll make it much more fun. <laughs> That's a big contrast to, like, uh, say, what Sam Gilliam was doing, where he, it really was about painting and, and taking painting off the canvas. And the subtext, or a lot of what he was maybe interested in, is a lot. There may not have been a lot of other thematic material on top of that. Whereas you are interested in this getting more prevalent, you just go to the show, and more like biomorphic, mm -hmm. nature, the processes of nature, uh, it can be skins, it can mm -hmm. be, you know, mm -hmm. the, the fact of the color palette oftentimes can be flesh-like, mm -hmm. or, um, so that might be interesting, I don't know if this is the best piece to talk about that no. with, but I know that that's also something that you're playing with, you're playing with, mm -hmm. um, and we can, you know, get that, get to that in another part of the room, but I like that a lot of the work, and this also continues to the work, there is, despite what you may think, I think a really good conversation with painting and with abstract expressionism and what other painters are playing with. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's back there somewhere. It's back there somewhere. Uh, because there's so many instances mm -hmm. where I think, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. this looks like you're having a conversation with those painters. Mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. That's just sort of my thoughts. But, okay. but I know, I know, I know, you, I know, I know that you're not conscious of I'm not conscious, thinking but, of that. but you know, I think, you, I don't think we're always not conscious of okay. a lot of yeah. things we're doing. Right. Because you've been showing art for a long time, uh -huh, and yeah. so you've seen a lot. Yeah, you, you've, those, seen, like, you've seen a and lot. It's in your toolkit, and mm -hmm, so it's going to mm -hmm, come out. I think it's what's been so interesting for me because I've followed your work now for almost 30 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess it was when you were living downtown New York and in the loft and making these extraordinary machines that breathe <laughs> and filling walls with these wonderful Japanese esque drawings, uh, experimenting with so many aspects of, of transformation. Mm -hmm. And I've always seen in your work an influence of a Japanese aesthetic, mm -hmm. and I think particularly in your attention to fiber and paper, mm -hmm. and paper making, mm -hmm. it's very much a Japanese, and not altogether, but certainly at Mm -hmm. the, the Japanese have raised that craft mm -hmm. to a very fine art mm -hmm. and the way they dye the paper and the way they use the indigo and the way they use subtle colors to bring to life mm -hmm. the material itself. And I think that's part of your magic is that you know how to take a material and certainly to make art, mm -hmm. uh, but, to, but to express its multidimensionality uh, you take it to a higher level, and, and we see it differently. 
and even in Jap and even in Japanese handwriting, on the surfaces, they're making an art is an art in and of itself. Mm -hmm. The inks they're using, the papers they're using, is art itself. Mm -hmm. That is a really good connection. Mm -hmm. yeah. Until the early nineties. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And this is probably the earliest work in this room, correct? Yes. And one of yes. maybe in the show, perhaps. It could be one. Yeah, I'm sorry I didn't put dates on it. No, that's okay. Oh, yeah. Just you know, we're oh. curious about these things yeah. historically, yeah. you know, and what yeah. led, what idea mm -hmm. leads mm -hmm. to another mm -hmm. idea. Yeah, because these pieces, these pods, and I called them vax, were in a show at the Bronx Museum in 1991, two or something like that. But different sort of lighting, and uh, that had these. They're very pod like. And, and again, this goes back to so maybe the natural world, or mm -hmm. and, and what I like about a lot of this work, especially the installation in there, is that I like to approach work like this, if I don't know anything about it, I think, you know, is it something primitive, is something old, or is it something like futuristic, or is it something otherworldly? And I like that it has that really confusing quality mm -hmm. to it. Um, it can't this be. is that abaca spray fiber, mm -hmm. and this at this point in time, I had just discovered from Dudenay how to ha get a compressor in my place and spray fiber. And that just opened up a huge number of doors. And um, so it was this sort of wrapped pieces and I was also, some of the others, I was taking the insides out with that, with the spray. This um, piece earlier had colored uh, holes cut in the back of it and um, with uh, you know, plastic tubing behind it and there was no light down here it was just the cords coming down and so it was not recently I've been going back through pieces sort of having sort of taking some apart that I wanted to change that I didn't really like as much and so this was one of them because I love the back I love the parts themselves and so uh, that's when I ended up with in the last couple of years making the cords uh, a lot of the sort of post-minimalist work that's going on in the 60s is all about process, all about chance, all about improvisation. And I think these works really speak to that interest, which has been, been going on for a very long it's time. It's been going for a very long yeah. time. Yeah, and I think these are really great articulations of that. Mm -hmm. So, because I think what you're saying is that this, the paintings, um, I'm painting, but they are going, they, I don't have the control. I'm working on it, I'm manipulating some, but I'm letting it dry. I'm then doing something else. And, you know, I, I have, it goes somewhere, but I'm not sure where it's going. Until it gets to that point, then I think it's finished, then I'll have to live with it in order to be sure with it. Is there, since, since you're not sure when it's done until it's done, mm -hmm. are there times when this process you feel like you did too much or you didn't do enough and, it, and then you haven't been able to return to it or um, so far or were I, all these meant to be experiments uh, <laughs> no I'll, so far when I first started with doing some like this work with the raw canvas I was I needed to have two paintings and so I got six canvases I did do all six but but it was interesting I was not sure you know how it was going to do but um, I will stop on something and try to wait I do have to get quieter to do this work. I just ha can't, you know, sculpture you can work a little harder on, but I think you, just to think and sort of breathe and understand what you're trying to do. Timothy? Any questions? I have a comment. Okay. Uh, you move so seamlessly between sculpture and painting and I wonder if when you're creating a certain body of work, uh -huh. if you then get an idea to jumpstart something else. I know that there's uh -huh. you know many years between mm -hmm. all of these, mm -hmm. but, but they mm -hmm. are, are very cohesive and you are so beautifully skilled and oh. know how to work with materials that um, that I just I wonder. It does. That. It does leave me. Mm -hmm. Materials. I, I I have something right now in the studio that I'm working on with a, another sort of breathing box and everything. With the lights over here, previously with doing some of that mm -hmm. other, definitely I realized. Oh yes, that is how I can do it. Yes. So back when you were doing these, were you uh -huh. also painting at that time? In the I, I, with those. I was not, I was doing a lot of drawing, 
and um, some of the drawings that we'll see back there, and um, that would have been in the 90s. Uh, yeah. I, I never actually pursued like a formal painting. No. No. Work. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You all. You yeah. went. You you took a left turn pretty quickly. Right. Yeah. I really did. Yeah. I I never thought of myself as a painter. And then when I had the show in New York, I was I was a painter. Right. You know. And I thought, oh. What else do you call it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And in that, there's skins and blowers, and there's uh, fiber between those sort of very thin plastics, and um, it's you know again things grow. Somebody was asked how it grows out. I have an installation that I, it has, you know, it had pieces on the floor and all of this and there was a radiator and I wanted to get rid of the radiator. So I lived next door to a sandblaster and I got the plastic from Canal Street and sandblast and put it over it. But then I had later, I had the box and, uh, you know, you, it leads to something else. Mm -hmm. And there was also, I worked with this guy at the robotics lab at NYU a lot, and um, he, we just became very good friends. And he was the one that helped me figure the blowers, the, you know, the, because they had two squirrel cage blowers, and one is blowing and one is sucking. So that is giving that breathing. And you, had you used this machinery before? It was other, other... after, yeah, I used it later. Okay. I mean, but he, we, I wanted these blowers to do more, and I said, you know, how can we make them work better? And so, so is it so is it a kind of um, fa a, a especially fabricated blower, or is it no. a kind of store bought that's been slightly it's, it's store bought? Okay. Uh, yeah. 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 Because I know you worked, you collaborated a lot with tech, uh -huh. sound oriented people. Yeah. So, you know. And this, yeah, this was. And this is relay switching. So all of this was fairly simple. Uh, 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 not high tech. Or a drawing or a painting or a sculpture or what sort of things. And, and all those fronts of things uh, were so successful. When, so <laughs> thank you. When you were saying about uh, painting, I was doing these works on paper, these shaped paper, because I got the paper made for me at Dudenay. And, and so that was painting, but it was on paper, you know, so. Uh, and so this, I did this whole of laying landscape, and this is standard landscape. And again, I was looking very much at the atmosphere outside and water and skies. And those are just beautiful expressions of becoming and the process of, of becoming art. I really, pretty special. So the underlayer of these start off similar mm -hmm. to that piece mm -hmm. there? It, they did, it's just that these were much more big drawings projected and that these were pe small pieces of paper I'm working on and using more eraser and graphite and just simpler lines right. and that sort of thing. Yeah, um, yeah these are a wonderful process. Yeah. Even though these are on the wall, they're almost a sculpture because of all the different layers that you have put into it to create. They're just lovely. That was a, I like that idea of building. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. 1982, I started it with air blowing on you at PS1, and then they went on through the 90s, mid 90s, and stopped. And then I picked this up again in 2021. So this, the the air player sculptures or kinetic pieces came first, and yeah. then these came. Yeah, it was on the same time. On the same time. You know, you so have did, you, you have consider a, these sketches for the sculptures. I couldn't consider them drawings. Well, I mean, like yeah. references to what yeah. you would really I mean, eventually I, you know, build. Yeah, I, I just do, you know, I've just been up and doing sculpture, I'll do drawings too. Mm -hmm. Called, you know, mm -hmm. sketches of, of, of land and space. Are you making your own? Or are you buying it in a certain state and then, cha and then changing it? I mean, with all of that. I mean, my mother's mm -hmm. dying, you know, and so it was, it was very much about skins and shedding skins and x-rays and uh, so yeah it had a lot to do with snake skin and bolt yeah but just all the changes yeah and it's all just sort of and it's rust it's paper. rust and wax and you know this is just a welded uh put together and with the with the rust on it you know that was part of it. and were this serialized at all or are there more of these sort no. of shapes the only one you made yeah. yeah and this was when early mid 90s early 90s Early nineties, right? And it reminded me. Yeah. I was saying a lot of a lot of the 
body work, people oh, are like Keith Smith were doing too at the same time. These skins, these kind of shedding, which were about delicacies and war. This, this piece in here, it's, you know, I was just saying that it's been in the process and change and um, not necessarily, you know, uh, it, it's not going to stay the same. It goes, it, I knew what the size of the space was and I wanted to have this sort of great breathing that you would walk through it, that your project, you know, projection would be in on that and that it all relates, that all of this sort of the work tells you of different things. And so what is here is there are blowers in each of the boxes, only one blower, and there's a mechanism that's turning it off and on, switching it, so that your air, and so it sort of blows on you, and it sort of moves things, moves these sort of palm-like shapes, and then I find, you know, now I have interior lighting on the side.